Hi guys. <laughs> okay, so it's not 10 o'clock yet, but I just wanted to check out um, my audio and make sure that you can hear me. So if the audio is fine, please just send me a message to let me know. Hi Topway, hi Wumi. So we'll just wait till 10, I think it's like 9.59. So just one more minute and then I'll start. Hi guys. Is my audio okay? Hi. Okay, it's 10 o'clock. Good morning, everybody. Hi. Welcome to my first Instagram Live. I've never done this before, so bear with me. Um, I... I'm gonna do a quick introduction of myself and then we'll jump right into what we came here to do. So my name is Atsunuke. Um, I started, I'm an accessory designer. Um, I started designing jewelry a couple of years back and um, I eventually found myself on the 3D printing route and that's what we're here to talk about. Um, I, I'm not a science major, so I'll give you a little background when I was in secondary school or middle school high school um if you're in the u.s uh i started off in the sciences and <laughs> i took technical drawing for i think a year and i was the kid with the zeros if you grew up in nigeria you know those teachers that give you zeros with the smiley face on it kind of telling you this is not for you so <laughs> When I come here to you today, I'm talking about 3D printing. I not a tech. I don't have the technical background for it. Um, if I go by what my teacher said when I was in secondary school or high school, I was not supposed. Like I'm not supposed to be doing this. This is not. Um, this was not meant for me. But I am doing it, and so I'm here to tell you that you can do it too. There is nothing you can't do if you set your minds to it and i'm a firm believer in that so um just to let you know i'm not my background is law i don't have any technical it none of that background but i do use 3d printing i do use the softwares um i went to school for it um i had a very very great instructor um and it, it's it's just been great. So uh, let's dive into this. So we're here to talk about 3D printing, fashion industry, accessories, um, accessory design. Uh, 3D printing, if you don't know what that is, if it's something that's new to you, it is pretty much building a three-dimensional product from a computer-aided design model. So there are different software models out there that can help you create um, a CAD model, so a computer-aided design model, um, and then you use that model to make a to 3D print. Um, now, the most important thing is actually learning the computer-aided, I'm gonna start saying CAD because it's so much e easier. So computer-aided design is CAD, right? So the most important thing is learning the CAD software, and there are a couple out there, um, and we'll get to that shortly. But uh, 3D printing is building three-dimensional products. It is very versatile right now. It's in the manufacturing industry, medical industry, architecture, um, also arts and design, um, accessories, jewelry, fashion, um, name it, it's, it's there. So... A lot of designers are experimenting 
Hi guys. A lot of designers are experimenting with um, 3D printing, 3D designs, 3D textiles. I mean, Nike has shoes based on 3D printed material. Um, I follow Iris Vern Harpen. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, I love, love, love her designs. The fluidity of her clothing is just amazing. It's very um, out of this world. And she uses a lot of 3D printing technology. So I feel like that's where the future is at with regards um, fashion, with regards accessories and all that. And that's why I went into that field. Um, so it opens... Um, the door to you know your creativity because when you and I'm gonna approach it as an accessory designer or as a metal smith um, a jewelry designer um, and you can apply this to whatever it is that you are interested in so if you think of when you create something with your hand it's usually two-dimensional it's flat you can't really um, create a lot of detail into it it's you're restricted so 3d printing takes you to a different plane where you can add detail you can add whatever it's really left to you and your creativity and that's what i love most about it it's you um unleashing your inner potential to create whatever um so that being said um Sorry, I apologize for that. <laughs> so you can, and there's 3D scanning too. So you don't even have to to actually build your models. There are a lot of software out there that scans a, uh, an object for you and you can replicate that object. So there's also that option if you don't want to go the route of actually building your own CAD model. Um, for me... Um, when I started this, I started accessory design or jewelry design a couple of years back. Um, and I was in a good place. I, my business was doing well. Um, and at that point, I lived in Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, but then we moved to Missouri. And we moved to rural town, Missouri. <laughs> I loved, loved living there. But it's a whole different market. Um, it was a whole different um, place. And I needed to it did affect my business and I needed to find a way to rectify the problems that I was coming across. So, um, hi. <laughs> um, I'll tell you some of the problems that I did initially come across. Um, one of them was getting staff. Um, I'd gone to the point where I wanted to produce more but I couldn't find people with the technical ability to do what it is that I required. Um, so faced with that dilemma, I had to figure out a way to produce. And I will tell you, 3D printing is a great solution to production. So if you think of um, when you do create a CAD model, how do you how do you make multiple pieces of it as a metalsmith as a jewelry designer most people go the route of making a mold or a, a wax carving and then you cast that and then make a mold with that now hi shale <laughs> so the problem that i found with that is when you make your cast model or your um wax carving apologize wax carving you have, if you're really good at casting, it can come out right and you don't have a problem. You have something you can use for your mold. If you don't, if you're not so great and maybe something goes wrong, you've lost that wax carving. You don't have that anymore. So the hours that you spent actually carving that, you've lost it and you can't get that back. Um, so CAD modeling actually does a great job of taking care of that. So if you model your whatever you want to create on a software and then take it to 3D print, even if you cast it you you and you lose that casting, maybe it's faulty, there are holes in it, or it just didn't come out right, um, all you have to do is go back and print out another wax carving. You don't have to sit down and carve out another one manually. So production-wise, 3D printing is amazing and it's not just for metalsmiths it's for designers accessories whatever it is eyewear glasses um 
instead of making one piece and then using that as your model or your mold for multiple pieces, you just create something in a software and that goes to print. Um, so that was, that was a no brainer for me. Production would be taken care of if I wanted to expand my business. And just thinking of that alone, it was worth taking out time to learn about the software and learn about designing and building on the computer aided design softwares. Um, the other thing, problem that I came across, I mean, when I started this, I, I thought, okay, you know what? Am I not even, you know, I don't think I want to learn this. Like I'm a mom of two. I have my business. I have my kids. I have things that are going on. I don't think I have the time for this. So I tried using freelancers. Um, there are a lot of amazing um, freelance sites out there. So I tried that and um, <laughs> the first one went fine. There was no problem. It was a very simple design. It was cufflinks. There were no issues. Um, the second one, and I'm sure if you follow me, you've read this in my post, was a dragon head. A little more complicated. <laughs> so we got to the point where the freelancer was talking lingo that I did not understand. She was talking about limitations. She was talking about the measurements. She was saying all sorts of things that being a metalsmith, I kind of knew what she was saying. And I was talking to her in metalsmith terms and she was coming back to me like, no, this is what I need. So it got to the point where she got frustrated. I got frustrated. I spent probably over a thousand dollars on something that now that I have the knowledge would probably have cost me about $300 to get done. Um, so that was something else that kind of spurred me towards 3D printing. Um, and the possibilities are endless. Like you can create so, so much. Um, I'll give you examples of, so the earrings I'm wearing right now, the hoops are, they, they are from my new collection um, that was supposed to be released, but due to Corona, we're still waiting for fashion shows and things. But I, I'm probably going to put this up um, on the website, so if you're interested. Um, but yeah, it is 3D printed. Like these pieces are 3D printed um, and the hoops are, I made those myself. But this has translated into my whole, I translated from just this to my whole collection. So 3D printing is great with that. If you produce one simple element for your collection, you can take that um, and so, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you produce one piece, you can take that and translate it to your whole collection. So this motif that I used for my earrings are the same motif that I used for the rings. I don't know if you guys can see this. So it's the same motif for the rings and this is 3D printed. I actually um, designed it. Oh, the light is really bad. Sorry. Um, but I really, I designed it on the computer and I 3D printed it and then I've made multiple pieces of it. So like I said before, production wise, it is fantastic. Um, because you don't have to worry about, oh, how am I going to make a hundred pieces? Um, and if you live in the U S or the UK or Canada, um, there are a lot of places that you can, um, produce your pieces. So it, if you look for me, for instance, I make, I make my pieces like a computer design them here in my studio and I send it to Shapeways or I send it to I'm materialized. Now those companies, um, they, that's what they do. They specialize in printing out 3d products. So this, they pr print out the, it in plastic, they print it out in metal. There is no limit to what it is you can produce and the materials that you can use for it. So that was another no brainer for me. I don't have to worry about um, production. If I don't want to do it in house, I don't have to, I can outsource it to somebody else. And even in the U S I don't know about UK and Canada, there are lots of places that actually just cast for you. So you don't have to spend a thousand dollars looking for or buying material. Um, what do they call it? Equipment for casting. When you start off, you can actually 3d, uh, produce your CAD model and um, produce, sorry, create your CAD model, send it to them. They will cast it for you and they can make a mold for you. They can make multiple pieces for you. So you don't have to worry about 
stock you don't have to worry about inventory you don't have to worry about production it really depends on how you want to approach your business that is up completely up to you but 3d printing gives you it's almost like giving a small business the opportunity and the access that larger scale businesses have so don't be like if you start this don't be worried about oh my god so where am i going to produce it there are lots and lots of places that will produce and cast for you. There are places that will clean it for you. There, so use those resources. If you live in the U.S., U.K., or Canada, if you, or anywhere in the Western, Western, you know, um, but if you live in Nigeria, I would say you know, connect with people like Elisha, collect, um, connect with people like Lagos Jewelry, um, Lagos. I hope I got this right. I'm so sorry if I didn't. I think it's Lagos School of Jewelry. Um, and I apologize if I didn't get it right, but they cast, they can help you pro do your production. So just use your network and you can do it. So like I was saying, um, I took this motif, I used it in a ring. I've used it, <clears throat> excuse me, I've used it in a bracelet. Um, and this is a bracelet that is in our collection. Now, when I made this bracelet, um, I wasn't too happy with it. And that's a great thing about 3D printing. You can go back and edit what you created. Unlike wax carving or creating um, a prototype by hand, if it's wrong, you have to start all over. With 3D CAD design, you don't have to do that. All you do is go back to your um, file and edit. So when I got this, I wasn't happy with it. I wanted to add some more elements to it. So what I did was um, I went back to my 3D model and I edited it. And I don't know if you guys can see this. I'm so sorry. There's so much light. Um, but I pretty much increased the dimensions of the front part of the bracelet. And I added some more texture to the bracelet itself. So... <laughs> Hi guys, hi, hi. So I added some more textures to the bracelet. And this is another great thing about 3D printing, or sorry, CAD design. Thanks, I do agree with you, it is nicer, right? Um, so this is another thing that's great about it is the little details that you can add to elements is beyond. If I tried to do this little details on a wax carving, it would have been so stressful. I, I don't even think I would have been able to do it. So going from this to this is one of the greatest things about 3D modeling. And what, you know, I referred to, um, hi, I referred to being able to translate your designs to different parts of your collection. So uh, in your collection from last season, fall, winter, last season was this, right? And I made this bracelet and this was also something I designed on CAD um, and produced, made multiple productions of it. And I can do it in gold, in silver, whatever it is. If I want to do, send it, I send it to them. I'm like, produce this amount. If I want 20, I produce 20. If I want it in silver, I produce it in silver. If I want it in gold, I produce it in gold. So what I did was I took our motif from the Inu collection and actually added that same motif to the bracelet in our new collection so i'm building on what i made before i believe that design is a story and it's a journey and i like to document that so this and this are connected you can as for me if i had like i have this in silver i have this in silver i can wear both and it tells a story it's still my brand it's still my signature so that's a, another great thing about 3d printing the um creativity is endless like it's limitless you can do anything with it um and then for people who are trend followers like if you know oh this is in season right now oh sorry let me back up so i know some of you i forgot to show you this one so i know some of you had seen this on my instagram page that i posted before so just backing up to being able to translate your designs to anything. This is actually a buckle for the body necklace. And I use that same design from the bracelet, 
from my earrings to the body chain and we for this collection i actually made belts as well so thank you i love it too and it's available in different colors um so for this collection i actually made bags and belts as well so for i took that same motif and i made it in a buckle for my belt see the creativity the ability to create sorry is endless you cannot put a limit to that um and it's still using the same file i had created from the get-go so i didn't edit much i would just okay if i need to use it to make a belt how do i make a buckle and guys i just took my belts my old belts that i had in the house looked at it and said oh this is how they created this one okay i am going to okay they did it like this okay and i replicated what i had that i saw in my own belt and that's how i made this nobody told taught me how to make a belt buckle I learned it on my own just by replicating the things that I had. So it is, you are able to learn a lot more with 3D design, um, with 3D design on your own. So if you have the foundation, if you know how to build um, CAD models, <laughs> Moji, you can do it. Um, if you know how to build CAD models, then the creativity, you can do anything. Just take your bag, your belt, your earrings, anything that you see that you like, accessories that you're interested in, print, build it, print it. I mean, they're 3D printed bags right now. So there is no limit to what you can do. So um, I'm trying, looking at my notes so I don't go off track. Um, uh, production possibility. Okay, so. I think I've covered all that. You don't have any risk of stock, like inventory. Um, you don't have to produce before you get orders. So you can wait when you have your collection. You can wait to see what the orders are like. Put a two to three week wait on people getting their items and start your production. You have the uh, less of a risk of having inventory left over. So those are things as a business owner that just drove me to 3D printing and CAD modeling. Um, and I must check, wait and check the time so I don't, because I want to take questions from you guys. I don't want to just be talking. Um, but I hope that that helps in some way. Um, and uh, yes, I mustn't forget this. If you're in the US or the UK or Canada, check your library. When I take my kids to the library to get books, um, I, I see they have a lot of MakerBots um, printers. Those are very basic printers. They are not for 3D printing. That's not what they're geared for. I'm sorry, when I say 3D printing, they're not for jewelry making. I'm talking to Melissa Smith now. Um, that's not what they're geared for. They're specific printers for 3D, um, for printing jewelry there's that's very different for wax carving it's very different from the makeup bots but if you go to your library you will see makeup bots there play around with that start to understand what 3d printing is what the methodology to it is expose your mind to that part of it even if it's not for the jewelry yet or it's not for accessories yet still try to understand what that is so your library is a great resource for 3d printing a lot of it is free. Um, you might have to pay for the material that's used to print whatever it is you build. So just, you know, don't wait. Get to it. You don't have to wait until it's jewelry related or accessory related. 3D printing, um, CAD technology is the future. I highly recommend it. I think everyone should have some sort of idea of how to do it if they can. Um, so. Uh, so just to go over the kind of softwares that are out there, um, before I start taking questions, um, I learned with, um, matrix. That's the software that I, they used to teach us at Kansas university. Um, it is by gem vision. Now it's not cheap. I'm not going to lie, but if you think of all the things that um, you will save on the back end, then it's worth the investment. Yeah, Moji, I agree with you. The stress of handcrafting is something, definitely. My hands tell the tale, so I definitely recommend 3D printing. Um, 
if you think of the back end and how much you're going to save, then I think that investing in the software is definitely worth it. If you decide to go to school for it, um, a lot of places have student um, discounts. So I will highly recommend that you ask about that and get it. Um, I got the student um, account and I had that for a year. It's about to expire and I can renew it for another six months. Um, but I didn't start using that software until I was done with school. So it's only valid for a year. I waited until I was completely done with school before I actually activated my software. So I would definitely recommend that to you as well. If you do go to school for it, if you get the student um, software, don't start using it until you're done with school because that gives you the year of you not having access in school. Um, so GemVision does Matrix and what they have right now is Matrix Gold. It is pretty pricey. Um, the cost, I believe, is about $8,000 for the software alone. I'm not going to lie. It's expensive. And you have to get a gaming computer. So a regular computer do does not work with these softwares. You will crash. You will crash your computer all the time and you lose your work. So you have to invest in um, a gaming computer and get the software. So all in all, you're probably going to spend a little over $10,000 just on the software and the computer. There are less expensive um, options and I'll get to that in a minute. That is the highest end of it. So think of it as eh, ballpark figure 12K is how much you're going to spend if you are going with Matrix. Now Matrix has its um, perks in that it is it has a lot of built in built um, um, templates so for instance if you use some other softwares you are going to have to build your diamond yourself if you are building a ring if you're modeling a ring you have to put your um, diamonds in it to kind of tell the computer where you're going to place your diamonds when you print the 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 wax the carving now um, some of those softwares do not have inbuilt diamonds they don't have inbuilt ring shanks they don't they don't have a library that's what i'm trying to get to matrix has that it has inbuilt libraries that takes the stress of you building everything from scratch so that's why it's a lot more expensive than most of the other softwares and with that library you can still edit so they don't just give you a library and say this is all you've got you can you have the option of building it from scratch yourself you have the option of using the library. You have the option of actually using the stuff in the library and editing the stuff that is in the library. So for me, Matrix was a no-brainer. It is very expensive. Hi, care. It is very expensive, no doubt. But um, when you think of how much time as a business owner, as an accessory designer, jewelry designer, whatever it is, time is money <clears throat> so if you are trying to save money think of that uh, think of it long term not just oh my god i have to spend twelve thousand or thirteen thousand dollars right now it's if i do this how much am i going to save in the long run so matrix i have matrix i use matrix um and i also have rhino now rhino is by robert mcneil and associates um, it's a less high, it's Oracle. <laughs> it is less expensive, way less expensive than, um, Matrix. Um, I think for the commercial version of Rhino, um, it is $1,295 with the rendering software. So when you, let me back up so I can explain this. And I think I have like three more minutes before I start taking questions. Um, when you produce your CAD model on the, on the computer, you have the option of before even, hi, before even um, printing it, you can render it to see what it would look like and actually show your clients and say, okay, I designed this for you. Um, this is what it's going to look like. Are you happy with it? Because if you show a CAD model to a client, they're not going to know what you're talking about. And like, what's all these lines and patterns that you put here? But if you, um, if you render it, then they see what it would look like when it's finally produced. Matrix has that rendering software inbuilt into it. So when you build your CAD model, you can render it. And if you go to my, um, thank you, Ike. Um, 
when you if you go to my page right now the post that i did last about this session those are 3d renderings they are not real i haven't made any of those rings i just created them on cad and then i rendered them so that i could show people if you're interested and if they want something tweaked they want the stone changed they want this moved around we can look at the picture and determine what it is that you want moved or changed and before i even produce or print anything so matrix has that inbuilt in it which is why it's also more expensive now rhino if you buy rhino it's a thousand two ninety five with the rendering software without the rendering software you're going to do like 995 dollars so like thousand bucks the good thing about rhino is you can use a laptop so my rhino that i have i actually um put it on a laptop so that if i travel i can still work my matrix is on my main computer like i said you need a gaming computer for that one but rhino is on my my laptop it works well i take it everywhere if i need to make something i can do that on the go so rhino is definitely highly recommended i use that too um the thing is they don't have an inbuilt library so you are going to build everything from scratch including your stones if you're going to make a ring you need to know the dimensions of your stones you need to put that into your cad model or else it's not going to come out right um so that is um rhino and they do have student versions as well so if you do go to school for this ask about the student versions student versions are really inexpensive that's what i have it was 390 dollars um for the total package and um that is the same as commercial commercial one you get it for life and you can use it for whatever so either way um i highly recommend matrix rhino depends on your pocket how much you want to spend and how much time you want to invest in learning how to build things so matrix you can just use the inbuilt library you don't have to learn as much rhino you've got to learn pretty much everything <laughs> so it's up to you but um gem vision also gives you the option of counter sketch and i know a lot of accessory designers actually use counter sketch now what counter sketch is is kind of um it's a library, inbuilt library of temp, mm, I guess templates that you can use to customize for clients. So in, for instance, if you want to build a solitaire ring, they would have different ring shanks for you, um, different options of ring shanks, different options of settings. And you can sit down with your clients, open your iPad or your tablet or whatever and go, okay, I'm going to customize something for you. So what kind of ring would you like? Oh, you want a solitaire? Okay, let's see. What size solitaire do you want? Oh, this is it. So everything's inbuilt. All you have to do is put it all together and show your client and say, is this what you want? If the client says yes, okay, great. We're off to printing. So you don't really have to customize anything they do say they have a customized option with counter sketch i don't know because i haven't used it um but it is on their website that there is a customized version customized version of it um and counter sketch you can use it as a streaming service as a streaming service is 995 dollars um uh and honestly you can do pretty much anything with that it all depends on you how much are you willing to learn how much time do you have to learn um, and how much money do you want to invest in this? So those are the three options that you have. You can go with GemVision. Um, they have Matrix. You can go with Robert, uh, Robert and Associates. They have Rhino. Or you can also go with GemVision. They have CounterSketch. Those three options are available to you and you can use any one of those. So I have talked to you lots. <laughs> and I would like to hear from you guys i don't know if you have any questions for me i know some people had sent some questions before so i will start with those um somebody asked can you start 3d printing without being a metalsmith before um it depends 3d printing is so wide like i said before it's used in different <clears throat> industries if you're talking about jewelry design and accessory design i will tell you what my instructor told me it is better when you have a metalsmithing background and are going into 3d design for accessories targeted towards accessories it is way better because you know the limitations of what you want to make so for instance when I was building this earring, I initially made it too bulky. I went back and I reduced the proportions of the earring. The reason why I did that is cost. 
As a metalsmith, you know if you are making something in silver, you're going to pay per the amount of silver that you're putting into that. So the ounces of silver, ounces of gold, whatever goes into that is what your cost will be plus other things. But if you can reduce the cost of the material you are making itself, then your profit margin is wider. So as a metal smith, if you have that background of say, for instance, a ring shank, let's see. So this ring here, it's upside down. Sorry, maybe I should put it on. It'll be much easier. Ignore my fingernails. Okay, yes, that is much better. So this ring, for instance, right? The ring shank, I think is about, I mean, it's less, it's probably a millimeter. Can you see that? It's probably a millimeter. If you do not, if you're not familiar with metal smithing, right? you will not understand how, what the tolerance is. So if I make it too thin, it's going to break. My clients will not be happy. But if I make it too thick, one, it's going to be too heavy, and two, it's going to cost me more to produce, which means the product is going to be more expensive, more than it needed to be, and my clients might not want to pay for it. So you, as a metalsmith, you already have the advantage of knowing the limitations of your creations so you know this is how much a ring chunk should be if i'm setting this is what i'm looking for if i'm making earrings i don't want it to be so heavy because it's pulling on your ears there are certain things that you already know knowledge that you've acquired <clears throat> excuse me that can be transferred to this so i hope that answered that question um you can start no i did not answer the question actually I guess the answer to the question is you can start 3D printing without a metalsmith, without being a metalsmith, but it's better if you have the metalsmith background. I think that's the answer that I was, I was going for. <laughs> I apologize. Okay, so how do you transfer the computer rendering to the real jewelry piece? So, um, like I said before, the computer um, rendering is just a picture. <laughs> it's just a picture of um the design that you made your CAD model it's not real what you are transferring for printing is your CAD model what the 3d printer recognizes and uses to create your model is the model you created on your CAD software um, and once you do that um, then it's it's much easier so don't don't think your rendering is a JPEG image it's either a JPEG or a PNG image it's not going to do anything for you. If you try to upload that into, say, Shapeways or iMaterialize, it's going to say you, tell you, I'm oh, sorry, I said say you, hi. It's going to tell you file not recognized. So, um, yeah, you have to, you have to use the right file. And usually those files, it took my, it took me a while to learn this. Um, and it was after going to school because backtracking when i went to my freelancer and told them to make a 3d model for me what they gave me was an stl file and this information is for anybody who wants to use a freelancer they gave me an stl file an stl file is what the 3d printer recognizes any other file is not recognized however if you get a freelancer to create something for you, what you should ask for is your 3DM file and your STL file. Because what is initially created on the CAD software that you can edit is your 3DM file. So when I use freelancers, they would send me the STL file and I would send that off to print. However, I could not go back to edit what they had created for me. So now that I have the knowledge of you know, CAD and creating stuff myself. One day I was like, oh, you know what? That cufflink that this person made for me that day, let me go and look at it and even try to edit it and use it for another um, client and just edit that so I don't have to make it from scratch. Lo and behold, I was like, oh, dang it. They gave me an SCL file. You cannot edit an SCL file. You can print it, but you cannot edit it. So for anyone who decides to go the freelancing route, when your freelancer gives you back, and a freelancer is somebody that, um, there are a lot of, so that I'm not talking in the air, there are a lot of sites like Indeed, Upwork, that in the US, I don't know what they are in other countries, 
there are people that are on there that can do work for you they don't necessarily like they're not on your payroll they just do the work you pay them and that's it um so when your freelancer does the file for you make sure that you get your 3dm file not just your stl file so ask for 3dm ask for stl so if you want to get uh edit that particular file you can send it to another freelancer or sell that particular freelancer okay well, i already have this file how much is it to edit this file you're not creating it from scratch so you're spending less time you're saving yourself money that's one and you always have your own file so you can build a library of yours and probably just work with that and edit it hopefully that helps um so hi guys um how is 3d so much different than a traditional jewelry that's not 3d um it is the ability to add in my opinion the ability to add more detail so let me use a, this example i can make this bracelet by hand I can carve it or use, <clears throat> or use, um, what do they call it? Um, wire, not wire, either a metal sheet or, um, I'm losing my words anyway. Yes. I can make this by hand and I can you carve this part in wax and actually solder both together. And that would be fine. There is nothing wrong with that. My instructor always said, if you can't create something by hand, don't waste your time doing it on a 3D model, except you want to produce it, um, use it for production. So I can do this. If it's a one-off thing, I can do this by hand. Now, you remember I said I edited it and I went back. These tiny details, and I guess maybe I put it on, it'll be much easier for you guys to see. I don't know if you can see it. But I put our EU motif on it. So you can see it, more there's more detailing on this. If I try to carve this, this little details on wax, it might break. It can take me forever, hours. And all I did on a CAD software, it took me like, what, 10 minutes max. So that is the benefit of like 3D printing as opposed to using, doing it by your hand. There are certain limitations using doing things by hand. It can break. Adding little tiny details is really hard. So just being able to do 3D printing is an added bonus. So I think that hand making things is essential. I don't take away from that. I still hand make a lot of things. But when it comes to production, I go the 3D printing route. When it comes to fine detail that I don't want to spend hours trying to do by my own hand, I go the 3D printing route. So I hope that answered that question. It just depends on you. Um, yeah, let me see. Do you guys have any other questions? I don't know. How do you find questions? See me. Now I'm just... <laughs> so I don't know. Those are the questions I have so far. If you guys have any other questions, let me know. Um, hi yes lagos jewelry school please if you have like if you guys are looking for places to help with your casting with um i don't know just helping you with metalsmithing in nigeria definitely go to her go to elisha because i know both of them have got their i don't want to curse but they've got it right so those are places that i can refer you guys to um for us here in america like i said if you want to go into 3d printing you can go to school for it if you want to you can learn online oh my god this guy pj chang um if you go to youtube there's so many videos on there that you can learn from so even after i finished in school i still went online and i learned a lot from him um and he has a particular um video that tells you about tons of places that you can get even more information so i definitely recommend youtube because it is fantastic it's a fantastic resource so get on there um if you get rhino um he uses rhino so it's easier for you to understand uh let me see so matrix rhino i think i've covered everything um i don't know do you guys want to see let me see let me show you like what the 3d what a typical matrix um 
page would look like. So bear with me. I'm trying to turn on my, my computer so you can see the interface. So this is The first time I saw it, I was like, what, what is this? Where am I going to start? Especially since I feel technical drawing. This is not going to be fun. But you can do it. I think that anyone who puts their mind to anything can achieve it. It's all about mindset. So I guess that's all I've got. I can. I don't know. Do you have questions? I'm waiting for questions. There are no questions. I guess that means I did a good job. <laughs> Anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you for your questions. Um, if you have any other questions, please, please, please send me a DM and I will respond to you. Um, I am thinking of actually starting maybe a YouTube channel that teaches you the basics of 3D printing. So if you guys would be interested, send me a DM and i will decide from there the more people that are interested the more um probability that i will do this um but i would love to impart some knowledge and just teach you guys um it's definitely fun and you can make lots of mistakes and make fun things even for your kids so uh i guess that's it that's all i got uh i don't know how they end this do i just say bye yes okay bye guys i don't know bye Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you later.